guys! Happy afternoon. Happy almost Thanksgiving. Uh, part of my look, I just got back from the gym, but just want to take advantage while I have the sitter here with Kaya. Um, so I just wanted to share a few of my favorite natural remedies that I stock for the winter. I've got an arsenal over here. Uh, and talk a little bit about why that's important. Just real quickly, I recently saw one of my patients. She's a seven-month-old baby. She came in as a new patient. And she had been on four antibiotics in the last six weeks, and it broke my heart. Uh, I definitely feel there's a time and place for antibiotics. Definitely, definitely, when they're needed, they are so important. Um, but I couldn't help think of this poor baby and her and her gut flora. So, what I mean by that is, um, when we take an antibiotic, not only does it kill the bad bacteria, but it kills all the good bacteria, particularly in our gut. Uh, and that's a huge part of our immune system. So it um, antibiotics over time and when they're used frequently cause something called gut dysbiosis. And basically what that means is that you've wiped out all of your good bacteria in the gut. And that's, that's like our main army, our main soldiers for when we're exposed to anything in the environment that our body wants to fight. Uh, what it also does that's that's even more of a problem is it causes something called leaky gut, which some of you may have heard of. Uh, literally makes holes in our um, like in our intestines, so things slip through uh, through into the bloodstream. What happens then is our body starts to see all these things coming through that shouldn't be there. It starts to attack them as it should. But what happens is it becomes this over-aggressive attack. So it starts to not only attack these things coming out of our intestines um, that are like bacteria and bugs, but then it starts to attack uh, food that we eat. So like chicken or uh, nuts or fruits. It's a lot of why you're seeing all these food allergies in kids. Uh, the other day I was walking down the hall in my kids' school and there was a list outside the classroom I had to take a picture of. There was 10 things on there that kids in the classroom had an allergy to, and you're seeing more and more of that, and part of that is because of this gut dysbiosis. So you start to attack all these foods as foreign invaders, and then what happens next is you start to attack your own body, and that becomes an autoimmune condition, that's why you're seeing a lot more of that. Um, we've been in practice 11 years. When I first got out, we saw autoimmune conditions in adults. I'm seeing them in kids every single day. So autoimmune conditions include eczema, food allergies are a big one, um, asthma, allergies, yeah, I mean, those are like the main ones I see, uh, so it's huge. So again, antibiotics definitely have a time and a place, but the overuse of them is just running rampant and causing so many health issues in our kids. So the good news of that is there's tons of stuff that you can do, uh, one, to boost your immune system, two, as a first line of defense, and then also I have some stuff that I use to help balance fevers. Fevers are our body's natural defense, so it's like cooking, it's trying to like heat the bugs out and kill them. Uh, really important. And when you're comfortable with letting it run, the body can really push through something more quickly. When we take fever reducers, we, um, we not only stop that process, but it also decreases the amount of glutathione in our system, and that's like our number one natural um, like immune part of our immune system so you're wiping out a huge part of the immune system which would be doing its job anyway uh, about a month or so ago Kaya was exposed to hand foot and mouth uh, from a family member and she was a little under the weather but I honestly just felt like she you know was kind of fighting something found out that someone that she was with that we're close with had it I uh, checked her mouth sure enough she had Coxsackie um, she was down and out for two days, and the person that exposed her, I think, had it for like two weeks. I do feel like part of the difference was that I supported Kaya's immune system. I let her run her fever. She got pretty hot at night, snuggled her skin to skin. I let her body do her thing, and it's become really efficient, and I feel like it's part of why our kids are, are, are pretty healthy and, for the most part, uh, fight their stuff pretty efficiently. Okay, so end of that. Here's to the fun part. Some of my favorite products. Okay, one of the best, apple cider vinegar. You can get it at your, your grocery store. You want to get the raw, organic, unpasteurized. Um, I love this in a humidifier. So it makes your room stink really bad, unfortunately. But what I'll do is I'll put like a cup, even two cups. I used it more when the kids were little, little. But um, for any congestion and any time they had a fever that just was inhibiting them from sleeping, uh, just run that. It just drops the fever just enough 
to keep them comfortable without interfering or knocking out any of their body's natural immune system. So love this. Um, and kind of like the stinkier the room gets, the better, because <laughs> you know they're breathing it in and getting exposed to it. So that that's great. Uh, along with that, in the air, I like to use some essential oils. The only two companies that I know of that I really trust are Young Living and doTERRA. Two of my favorite winter products are On Guard, which we diffuse in the house. It just smells good. It's like clove cinnamony. Um, but I diffuse in the house if we've got any bugs going on or if we've been exposed to a lot of patients that are sick. Uh, it kills staph, strep, MRSA. We also use the soap, which my kids love. There's like a foaming soap. Uh, kills everything. And then breathe. <clears throat> This one I have on all the nightstands in their rooms, so if anyone's congested at night or has like post-nasal drip or a cough, I just rub this on them even while they're sleeping. They also each, I forgot to bring it down, but they each have a little vapor stick, so they can even just rub it on themselves, and it's just diluted, um, so that's super user-friendly too. They love this. Um, all right, so going back to leaky gut and gut dysbiosis, this is one of my absolutely favorite, favorite products. It's called Restore. There's a liquid that you can drink, uh, and there's a nasal spray that's amazing for anyone that has allergies. It's actually the same formula, so it's the exact same thing in both bottles. It's just a different way of getting it in. Um, basically, what it does is it restores those tight junctions that may have opened and allowed things to come through the gut that can help, remember, cause that autoimmune reaction. Um, Restore also helps block the effects of glyphosate. For any of you know, any any of you know, glyphosate slash Roundup is one of the most ubiquitous uh, pesticides used on all of our foods that aren't organic. Um, there was finally just a lawsuit that went through that they proved that it's causing cancer. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, if you're buying organic produce, technically you're not exposed to it. I think we all still do get some of it. Restore literally blocks it. So we all take this every day, every day. This is also, um, I'm about to put the boys through a detox, and this is like the prep phase of that. So it's getting everything ready in their gut so that they can handle pulling out any toxins. Love, restore, it tastes like water, so it's super easy for them to take. And then my last two, super powerful as well. We have these in the office. AHCC, it's probably backwards for you guys, sorry. And IG26. Uh, this one is a mushroom extract. This one is a formula that does have eggs, so if you're allergic to eggs, you can't have it. Uh, these are go-tos when Jay and I come home. If we've been around sick patients, we always encourage our patients if they're sick to come in because getting adjusted is huge for the immune system. Uh, we check our kids too every day. If they're around people that are sick, we adjust them. Uh, but so we're, we're around a lot of sick people. So these are on our counter in the kitchen. Um, this one I just started using this year and I love it. So uh, the way they're explained to me and the way that makes a lot of sense to me is, so AHCC will help you make more of the good soldiers, which is always great. So if you're exposed to a virus bacteria, you just have more good fighters. And then what those good soldiers have to do is grab on to any foreign eaters, stick, stick to them, and then kind of like explode. Um, and this helps them stick. So you can rotate them. Um, this one's a little pricey, but worth its weight in gold. This one's a little less expensive. You can rotate them. You can take both. So I actually have our kids taking one of either one every day. I am as well. Uh, and then if anyone's like sick or run down or anything like that, I double up. So I'll either do like two of this one, two of this one, or one of each. So we have these in our office. Again, sorry, it's backwards, but this one is called AHCC. This one is called IG26. Um, you can give them to your kids. They're both capsules, so you would open them up, pour them in stuff. This one has a stronger flavor. I basically mix it in an algae with coconut milk, tiny bit of stevia, and I just load up shot glasses for the kids in the morning. So they either get a coconut milk with this, or they get, um, we don't drink juice in our house, but they'll have a little bit of orange juice, and I'll mix this in along with their vitamin D, vitamin A. Um, I do methylated Bs for them, which is really big for um, just helping eliminate toxins from some kids, particularly those that have the MTHFR gene, which uh, why it does, we haven't tested Kaya yet, but I just, I, I treat them all for that. It's a good vitamin to take anyway. Um, yeah, so those are our go-tos. So AHCC, IG26. Restore, it's like your insurance to block all the pesticides. Breathe in on guard. And stinky but effective apple cider vinegar. 
All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. If you want to go deeper into any of those topics, i um, happy to talk about it. The autoimmune stuff that we're seeing in kids is so, so big. Uh, perhaps I'll do some more videos on that because there's tons of stuff we can all do at home to help protect them from that. Uh, basically, if, if, so when babies are six months or under, they actually are born with leaky gut. It's, it's part of nature's way. It's intended to be that way. So anything they get in, uh, they're so, so sensitive to. So it's so good to have like the cleanest stuff possible to give to them. Uh, if people are doing formula, which I fully support, obviously, I would definitely go with organic. Um, I would try to limit any soy because there's tons of genetically modified um, things with the soy. Uh, so, and then obviously breast, breastfed is really good. And then I would always wait until after six months to introduce any foods because it's just going to uh, decrease the risk of food sensitivities later. All right. Hope that helps, guys. Let me know any questions. Have a great day.